Hello everyone, welcome back to Did You Know? Today, we'll be talking about more predatory lending practices that were used on black Americans to keep them segregated from white neighborhoods. These practices not only made it difficult for black Americans to buy a home, but it also put them in serious financial turmoil. If you're strapped for time, you can always check out our website where we have all our videos. Without further ado, let's get into it. Did you know there was a time where someone would buy a house and make payments and still not be the owner of that house? Because black Americans couldn't receive mortgages backed by the federal government, they had to look for riskier alternatives. With contract buying, the buyer would put down a large down payment for a home and would make monthly installments until the contract was paid in full. Sounds good, right? However, the seller could evict the buyer at any time if they missed a payment, even if it was the buyer's last payment because it's a contract and not an actual mortgage. The buyer couldn't accumulate any equity on their home and they were not protected by any laws or regulations. This form of predatory lending was very prevalent in heavy and dense urban cities like Chicago. There was a large population of black Americans who were seeking home ownership. However, there was not a lot of housing units for sale to black home buyers, and lenders were unwilling to give federally backed loans to them as well, which resulted in many blacks paying higher prices for homes. Steering is the process by which realtors attempt to guide a particular buyer away from or towards housing in a specified area based on their race or religion. This includes the act of withholding information about certain prospective homes from buyers. Steering was used to keep minorities such as black Americans in their own neighborhoods and white Americans in their own communities. This was and is one of the major reasons why many neighborhoods around the country are still segregated today. Blockbusting refers to the practice of introducing black home buyers into all white neighborhoods to produce housing price decline and white flight. An agent or speculator would intentionally place a black home buyer in an all white neighborhood, then spread the tales of impeding depreciation. This would cause residents to sell their homes under the market value. Then the agent would mark up the price of the home when selling to black families. The fear was that an invasion of black families would cause the price of homes in affluent and white neighborhoods to decline, hence causing the white flight. Racially restrictive covenants were agreements between buyers and sellers of property that usually appeared in the deed. These covenants stated that the property would not be sold, leased, or transferred to minority groups. This was also the common method used by the real estate industry to enforce racial segregation at the time. From 1924 to 1950, Article 34 of the Realtors National Code mandated that no realtor should introduce an individual into a neighborhood whose presence would clearly be detrimental to the property values in the neighborhood. These covenants strategically isolated black Americans as they were usually identified as a restricted group on the deed. You can find many of these agreements on old deeds today. Thankfully, these were outlawed and deemed illegal in 1948. These unethical lending and housing practices worked together to block black Americans from accessing the resources needed to obtain home ownership. It wasn't until the Fair Housing Act of 1968 that most of these unethical practices were outlawed. If you would like to learn more, please check out our website. Thank you.